He's like, can we come in and see the true condition? She's not stupid. She's like, yeah, sure, come on in. So Albert Fall comes in. It was like, yep, he's, this is him making decisions every day. And then I take the, thank you, honey. And I take the, the papers from him that I don't understand because I'm just some dumb broad. And Edith's just propped up Woodrow in bed, like waving like, hey. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And she's like, bye. And then they leave. That's how dumb government is. We had a woman running this country. Hello, today we're gonna to talk to you about the election of 1800. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, they were founding fathers of America, and they were also the best of friends. Adams was like, the Constitution, you can kind of bend that how you need to bend it. We can kind of work with this. And Jefferson was always like, the Constitution is the Constitution. Can't f with that. But they loved each other. Until Adams became president. And immediately they started butting heads. John Adams was like, it's illegal to talk any sh about the president of the United States. And if you disagree with the federal government, f you. And Jefferson was like, well, this is tyranny. That's a violation of a little something called freedom of speech. It all really reaches its head on the election of 1800 where these two lifelong friends were pitted against each other. Adams is like, if you elect Thomas Jefferson, here's what you're gonna get. Murder, all the time. Everybody's gonna be murdering each other. Incest, your wives will lose their virtue, having sex with a lot of dudes, willy-nilly. So Jefferson starts talking a lot of about John Adams. We're talking about guys who like created this country. They were really like, a bunch of eighth graders. He was like, you know what? Adams has prostitutes shipped in from overseas that he bangs all the time. I'm just gonna just gonna tell you that right now. I'm I feel like I keep seeing spit flying from you my know, mouth. No, I'm feeling it. Am I spitting yeah, I'm a lot? Glad you're seeing it. Yeah. That's good. I'm in the splash zone. <laughs> so Jefferson went to the newspapers. He says, uh, I want to tell you this John Adams is a hermaphrodite. He's got both man and woman sex organs. But this is like a published statement from Thomas Jefferson. Adams was like, okay, fine. You want to go that route? That's when the got really dirty. Adams says, oh, by the way, if you were thinking about voting for Jefferson, you shouldn't because he's dead. It's a pretty good campaign. It's a very good campaign. Vote for me, I'm alive. Yeah, even if you disagree with everything I say, at the very least, I'm alive. Would you rather be accused of having a penis and a vagina or being dead? I think being alive with a penis and a vagina would be an amazing experience. And you're alive. <laughs> Jefferson calls upon a hatchet man, James Callender, to publish newspaper articles about Adams. Adams... What was I gonna say here? Oh yeah, and he's gonna go to war with the French. That's what was published in the newspapers, and it's a lie, it's not true at all. America was like, I don't wanna go to war with the French. That sounds terrible. And they elect Jefferson into office. Jefferson wins, Adams is like, you wanna go with this loser? Fine, but before I leave, I'm going to appoint all of these people who violently oppose everything Jefferson stands for. And then he's like, I hope you like all these ass So, Cut to four years down the line, and Jefferson's daughter dies. And Abigail Adams is like, look, I know we've had our differences with Jefferson, but I should pop him off a letter. She's like, look, I'm really, really sorry about your daughter, and it sucks that she is dead. Jefferson gets this letter, and he's like, I, I, I want to thank you so much for being so considerate about the death of my daughter. But while I've got your attention, I also want to tell you, F you and f your husband for being such ass f who f up my presidency. This is how immature these great men of American history were. He can't even like just, like that should have been two separate letters. She's like, John, you know what? We're done with Thomas Jefferson. He's an ass f I tried to make it work with this guy, but, but f him. So these two don't speak for a decade. Eventually Benjamin Rush who was another founding father, was like, look, John Adams, Johnny, I love you two guys. Why aren't you speaking anymore? Why can't we all be friends like we used to back in those glory days, those 1776 days that were so magical? And John Adams was like, look, I love Tommy Jeffs. 
I'm a big fan. I'll pop him off a letter. It's very general. It's like, hey, how you doing? I'm, you know, I miss you. I hope you're all right. How's things going? Jefferson gets the letter. He's like, Adams, Johnny Ads. Good to hear from you, buddy. It's been 10 years. How's life? And then the letters start flowing, and before you know it, they start to connect on certain things. They start to connect on, I'm a little concerned about slavery. Thomas Jefferson was like, I'm anti-slavery, but I do have hundreds of slaves. <laughs> uh, uh, was it, what am I talking about? <laughs> Keep going. You got it. It's weird how quickly alcohol makes you not realize what you said at all. <laughs> so, by the end of their life, these two have exchanged 158 letters, and they're best friends again. Then it's 1826. John Adams is on his deathbed, and his last words are, independence forever, and also, Thomas Jefferson survives, because that guy's fucking awesome. Little did he know that just a few hours prior, miles and miles away, Thomas Jefferson had also died. That day was July 4th, the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which is crazy. That's true friendship. True friendship. Cheers. To friendship. You're my best friend. We barely know each other. Okay. Oh, we're best friends. Hello, I'm Rich Falcher, and today I'm gonna introduce Abraham Lincoln, the lawyer. You know this um, device called the Reaper in the 19th century? People were like, and then McCormick invented a automatic Reaper. People were like, this is crazy. I can't believe this. John Manny said, I invented the automatic reaper. And then that meant there was a big Lusa lawsuit. I invented the reaper, you mother I invented the reaper, you mother And Manny, got some Philadelphia lawyers called Harding and uh, Sin and Watson and some other people. These guys are like, we've got to um, do this with the local guy. But they didn't know anybody, and so they hired this guy. Lincoln was this lawyer, man. He was like a lawyer. Lincoln answered the door. Stanton went, he's like some sort of nerd. Lincoln's like a nerd. And I mean, it's not even like a funny sitcom or anything. And then this guy Watson looks at him and says, oh, shit. he doesn't even have a, like a Watson or he doesn't have a Watson. He doesn't have a vest. Whoa, what's that all about? What are you doing? Lincoln was like viewed as persona no grata. The case changed to Cincinnati. Stanton and Carding go, mm -hmm, we don't need Lincoln anymore. But Lincoln didn't even know about any of this shit. But he would just keep researching and researching. Oh yeah, ba 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 ba. I've been just going along with my own fun. And he would write. He would be like, "Am I involved in this case or what?" Finally, he found out that the case had been moved to Cincinnati, and he was like, "I've got to go to Cincinnati." So he went. Lincoln went up to the hotel where all the lawyers were, and, and Stanton saw Lincoln coming up, coming up. Oh my God, this guy is a lanky, gawky, awkward, ape-legged, ape-armed man. This guy's weird. This guy's like an ape. He's got ape arms. He's got like ape awkward arms. This guy is like an ape awkward guy. 
This guy is an ape. Ox, ox, ox word. He's like an ape man. This guy is like an ape awkward man. Lincoln stayed for the whole case. They just go on without even acknowledging Lincoln. The legal arguments that were made and the structure. Oh my God, this is the way to do it. Like, oh, I was just like a myriad of wonderment. I'm, 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 and get things going. I'm gonna get my in gear. I'm gonna be Mr. House. And five years later, he becomes the president. Here's the thing, because Stanton was part of the firm that said, we're like not into you. Lincoln said, I'm gonna get Edwin Stanton to become Secretary of War. How cool is that? When Lincoln dies, he says, now he belongs to the ages. And Lincoln goes, that's great. What's the biggest lesson to learn in this story? My uh, balls are big. Hello. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about Edith Wilson, the first female president of the United States. Woodrow Wilson was the president of uh, America, the United States of America. Edith. Wilson was the goddamn president's wife. So Woodrow Wilson, he had 18 months left in office and he had a stroke. His doctor was like, uh, Woodrow Wilson has had a stroke. A big stroke. Like, we can't move, y'all. Stroke. So what you gonna do? And Edith was like, well, who I love is this man for who he is. And who he is, is a guy who wants to be president for some fucking reason. So if I don't, just ignore that. If I don't, just ignore that. If I don't help him be president, what a kind of wife am I? The doctor is like, uh, you <laughs> gotta run the fucking country because this guy's out for the count. So Edith was like, no problem, I got this. Shut up, sit down, I am in charge now. Can I get my cheesy bread I brought? Your what? Cheesy bread that I brought. Can we finish this part? What part? The part that we want to do. I did it bad. We're still doing it. All right. Oh. I don't want the bread anymore. <laughs> so Edith Wilson, she told America, hey guys, excuse me, my husband, the president, He's very tired, and he will be resting. He's very tired, saying he needs to rest. And she even went to Congress and was like, hey, no big deal. I'm giving him everything you're saying, Congress. I'm giving him all the letters and the things. So what do you guys think of this rule or law or thing that we're working on? And they'd be like, whatever, we think this. I should bring it to Woodrow, who was like half awake. And she'd be like, all right, well, Congress is like, blah, blah, blah. And he'd be like, uh. And she was like, well, I guess I'll compromise. I'm just going to make the decision make the decisions myself. So basically, Edith Wilson was the first female president. She ran memos between Congress and him. Congress is like, all right, what? 
what? What is going on? So Congress picked this one Republican senator, Albert Father, like, Albert, go see what his true condition is. Go see what Wilson's true condition is. So Albert Fall shows up. He's like, can we come in and see the true condition? She's not stupid. She's like, yeah, sure, come on in. So Albert Fall comes in. And was like, yep, he's, this is him making decisions every day. And then I take the, thank you, honey. And I take the, the papers from him that I don't understand because I'm just some dumb broad. And Edith's just propped up Woodrow in bed, like waving like, hey. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. And she's like, bye. And then they leave. That's how dumb government is. We had a woman running this country. And guess what? You could go, nothing good happened, but I could go, nothing bad happened. 9-11 didn't happen on her watch. Um, Disney land with Johnny Depp at the anim the ho the haunted mansion that's all Tim Burton that didn't happen on her watch with Christmas and Halloween combined a lot of things basically everyone at this point is like where is the president where is our boss whoever in the name of God is like our boss is missing we can't wait to get him back nobody. Nobody wants to see they boss. Ow. <laughs> so she literally is like, I can feel the heat on me. I know what I'll do. I'll set up a photo shoot. And they prop up Woodrow Wilson in the Oval Office. So he's like sitting there and they like move his arm and then they just release that to the press. And that's how dumb people were back then. They're like, oh, there's the president sitting there signing a document. <laughs> what the heck were we worried about? He seems to be all at work and sh So that's all fine. That's how she ran the country. That's a good story. This is our... <laughs> Can I just get back Watch up? Watch your head. Huh? Can I just get back up? Yeah. But it's not on the show. What? Anything. When does it start filming?